Hey, well, good morning. It's Mike Miano, pastor at the Blue Point Bible Church. And as we do every Monday, I want to bring us in on our missional Monday. Also want to highlight International Overdose Awareness, which is today, International Overdose Awareness Day. And um, bring us in on some common prayer. As you can tell, I'm doing my video Caleb Graham style. Um, Brother Caleb Graham and I do a, a podcast on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, and he's usually doing his videos in the car, so today I have the privilege of uh, doing my video uh, Caleb Graham style, being that I'm here helping at a local elementary school where they're uh, beginning to set up for the school year. So um, obviously we want to keep the students and the teachers in prayer right at the beginning of our prayer, keep those that struggle through addiction and overdose in our praises and prayers of those that overcome overdose and addiction of course in praise and lead the example and then of course praying for those that struggle with addiction and families that have been uh, devastated due to overdose so um, that all being the the precedent of our prayer time today I want to thank you for taking some time out of your your day to join me um, what I'll do is I'll open up kind of explaining uh, yesterday uh, yesterday here at the Blue Point Bible Church we uh, all wore purple. I am grateful for those that wore purple to help raise awareness in regards to overdose. And then later in the evening, I had the privilege of joining a local gathering uh, where local legislators, local organizations, um, and other pastors had came together, had come together to uh, lift up prayers on behalf of families, uh, lift up prayers for the ending of stigma in regards to addiction. Uh, also lifting up prayers to see the end to addiction and overdose, which we know is preventable and is able to be overcome. So um, hopefully those are all the things at the beginning of our prayers today. And yesterday I preached at the Blue Point Bible Church about wisdom and um, delight. And obviously those are in contrast to foolishness and grief. And uh, what I had used was the story there in 1 Samuel chapters 13 through 15, of Saul and Jonathan, three people that were of reference was Samuel the prophet, uh, who continually rebukes the people of God for their, uh, their, you know, their stubbornness, their foolishness, and um, then we had Saul, who was the first king of Israel, and we see his foolhardiness, um, his uh, hard-pressed foolishness, if you will, uh, right there in those chapters. We see his lack of faith. We see his constant carnal motivation, his constant focus on carnal things rather than on God, and um, we obviously lamented that. But then we've seen this beautiful example of Jonathan, who had faith, who was willing to look to God, who even said there in uh, those chapters that God does not need many, you know, a, a mighty military of many people to defeat many. Uh, God can use a few to defeat many because, again, it's the power of God. And that was kind of the highlight of foolishness uh, was that um, when we we, fo we set our eyes on earthly things and we, we become captivated by worldly fear uh, rather than a reverential awe in the power of God, we unfortunately suffer. We suffer because of foolishness and, and we cause grief to God. Uh, we see there that Saul grieved God, grieved Samuel. And... Um, may we pray that we never become where we don't live lives of foolishness and worldly fear where our hearts melt within us, but rather we maintain the fear of God. We maintain wisdom. We seek wisdom. We grow in wisdom and we bring forth delight. So uh, that was the sermon. Obviously, it'll be uploaded this week. I do encourage you to visit bluepointbiblechurch.org. Just go ahead and or you can simply go to Google and put in Blue Point Bible Church Buzzsprout and it'll bring you to the list of our podcasts. So let me bring us in on our time of praise and prayer. I do encourage you, if you're tuned into this video, to go ahead and post your praises and prayers in the comment box. I would love to be praising God with you and praying for you. And um, let's go ahead and just move into our time. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In our words and in our lives, may your will be done. Psalm chapter 146, verses 1 through 3 read, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of the earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth. And in that day their thoughts perish. In our words and in our lives, may your will be done. Salvadorian Archbishop Oscar, Oscar Romero said this shortly before his assassination. I'm going to speak to you simply as a pastor, as one who together with his people has been learning the beautiful but harsh truth 
that together with his people, I'm sorry, uh, this beautiful but harsh truth that the Christian faith does not cut us off from the world, but immerses us in it. The church is not a fortress set apart from the city. The church follows Jesus, who lived, worked, and struggled, and died in the midst of a city, in the polis. So again, that's a reminder for us to be in the world and not of the world. Um, we are not to be totally set apart from the world in a sense that we don't go in and we don't have a we don't understand the worldly griefs, we don't understand the world problems, um, we don't that we don't see these devastations that are all around us, but rather we go in and we bring forth hope and action uh, that glorifies God. Matter of fact, last evening. Um, when I lifted up prayer at that local event I mentioned, uh, that was the focus of my prayer, that we would see hope and action take place in regards to overcoming addiction and overdose. So, I want to bring us in on our time of prayer, and then I'll bring us into the Our Father, and I'll bring us into the rest of the devotionals that I have for us. Um, again, I encourage you to wear purple today. We had given out crosses, purple crosses at Blue Point Bible Church, um, again, signifying uh, overdose awareness, purple being the color that was chosen. And um, may this be before us today, this, this purple cross. You know, again, uh, Christ immerses himself in the world. And as we see many devastated by uh, addiction and, and, and uh, overdose, uh, may we continue to lift up prayers for them and know that the cross envelops these problems. Mighty God, we do thank you, Lord, for your will in our lives, the testimony that many of us have, Lord, in regards to you being the light that comes in the midst of darkness. Lord, go before us today. Allow us to see healing take place in our world, in our land, and in our lives, Lord. May we see addiction end. May we see overdose end. May we see all the destructive things, Lord, that have plagued this world and our society come to an end, Lord, as we, bring for, as we breathe forth, Lord, hope and action. As we bring forth hope and action as we watch you go before us. Lord, I lift up those families that have been devastated by overdose. You know them, Lord. Unfortunately, the common saying is that we all know somebody. So Lord, I, pr I pray for those that say that. I pray that each of us who know somebody, that we're praying for those that need the encouragement to continue to encourage those that are sh stuck in the trenches, Lord, of addiction. That we would bring hope and action into their lives, that we would be testimonies for them, Lord. That in our awareness, we would also highlight healing. Lord, we also make mention of those that struggle and due to this uh, local pandemic, this uh, local, well, this world pandemic. Um, Lord, we ask that you go before the students and the teachers that are returning back to school this year. We ask that you go before each and every one of us, that we do not get affected by this pandemic in a matter of physical sickness, um, and even that we don't get stressed, Lord, and, and allow this to affect our families, our marriages, our homes, our, our, our neighborhoods, Lord. But rather, we look to you. We have faith in you and your purposes, Lord. We know that it's your will that will be done. Give us that wisdom, Lord. Allow us to be that delight to you. Lord, I lift up my sister Kathy to you this morning as she's mourning her friend Ronnie. I lift up Ronnie's family to you, Lord, and ask that you give them peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we lift up not only these prayers that were mentioned audibly, but those that remain within our hearts and our minds. Lord, we know that you are in true and in sovereign God. Remind us of that today. Allow us to see glimmers of your beauty of your sovereignty, of hope in you, Lord. And may we bring forth action. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to go ahead and well, I want to conclude with the Our Father, and then I'm going to bring us in on the daily reflections for highly effective people. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom has come, your will has been done, on earth as it is in heaven. You have given to us our daily bread and forgiven us of our trespasses, as we continue to forgive those who trespass against us. And you have led us not into temptation, but have delivered us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. August 31st reading. Here we are at the end of a month. I hope that you've already begun to prepare challenges to move into another month, another season, which is almost upon us. In the month of September, we see the beginning of fall. Uh, may we fall forward. Amen. Security and clear guidance bring true wisdom. 
and wisdom becomes the spark or catalyst to release the direct power. When these four factors are present together, harmonized and enlivened by each other, they create the great force of a noble personality, a balanced character, a beautiful integrated individual. Again, so that the characteristics we're looking at here is true wisdom, well, security, clear guidance, true wisdom, and direct power. May we see those in our lives today. I'm going to say them one more time. Security, clear guidance, true wisdom, and direct power. In our daily bread today, the last reading of the daily bread, prayerfully you have all your, uh, your articles. And if you need another daily bread, please let me know and I'll go ahead and mail it to you or I'll send you the website where you can go ahead and uh, continue to go through the daily bread in your daily devotions. Today, 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 10 is the verse that they highlight. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Had the wireless radio been on, they would have known the Titanic was sinking. Cyril Evans the radio operator of another ship had tried to relay a message to Jack Phillips, the radio operator on the Titanic, letting him know that they had encountered an ice field. But Phillips was busy relaying passengers' messages and rudely told Evans to be quiet. So Evans reluctantly turned off his radio and went to bed. Ten minutes later, the Titanic struck an iceberg. The distress signals went unanswered because no one was listening. In 1 Samuel, we read that the priests of Israel were corrupt and had lost their spiritual sight and hearing as the nation drifted into, as the nation drifted into danger. 1 Samuel 3, 1 tells us, The word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Yet God wouldn't give up on his people. He began to speak to a young boy named Samuel, who was being raised in the priest's household. Samuel's name means the Lord hears, a memorial to God answering his mother's prayer. But Samuel would need to learn how to hear God. Speak, for your servant is listening. It's the servant who hears. May we also choose to listen and obey what God has revealed in the scriptures. Let's submit our lives to him and take the posture of humble servants, those who have their radios turned on. Why is it vital for you to obey what God has revealed in scripture? How can you stay tuned in to his voice? Dear Jesus, thank you for being a speaking God. Thank you for the scriptures that help me follow you in obedience. Speak, for your servant is listening. Amen. Perfectly, you can say amen with me. Let's go ahead and read our last devotional, which is going to be God is with you every day by Max Lucado. Again, just as I mentioned with the daily bread, if you have need of this devotional, I can go ahead and send you a copy. Just simply send me a message on Facebook or, or an email at PastorMikeMiano at Yahoo.com, and I'll do all that I can to get you a copy of these devotionals. Today our reading for August 31st is... Why not? The verse put before us is Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all, healing all kinds of sickness and diseases among the people. Christ stunned people with his authority and clarity. His was not the mind of a deranged wild man. Demented fool? No. Defrauding fool? Or deceiving fraud? Some have said no. Some believe that Jesus masterminded the greatest scheme in the history of humanity. If that were true, billions of humans have been fleeced in following a first century Pied Piper over the edge of a cliff. Should we crown Christ as the foremost fraud in the world? Not too quickly. Look at the miracles Jesus performed. The four Gospels detail approximately 36 miracles and reference many more. He multiplied bread and fish, changed water into wine, calmed more than one storm, restored sight to more than one blind man. Yet in doing so, Jesus never grandstanded his miraculous power, never went for fame or profit. Jesus performed miracles for two reasons, to prove his identity and to help his people. Had Jesus been a fraud or a trickster, people would have denounced the miracles of Christ. But they did just the opposite. Can you imagine the testimonies? If you were a part of the crowd he fed, one of the dead he raised, or the sick he healed, speak up and tell your story. And speak they did. The church exploded like wildfire, on a West Texas prairie. Why? Because Jesus healed people. Why not let him heal you? What a beautiful devotional for today, International Overdose Awareness Day. Why not let him heal you, amen? 
you struggle with addiction, you're in my prayers. If you're a family that's been rattled by the, the devastation of addiction and overdose, you're in my prayers. You're in my thoughts throughout this day. Again, as I hold this cross up, that's what I think about. How the cross envelops those those cries of his people are hurting due to overdose and, aware, uh, overdose and addiction, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say this last thing before I bring us to a close. Um, for the month of, well, the next couple months, a month of September I'm beginning, starting tomorrow, I'm beginning 90 days through the Bible. If you have never read through the Bible and you really want to hear that voice of God that we heard from in the Daily Bread, I encourage you to join me on that 90 days through the Bible. Now, this is not an in-depth Bible study method. This is rather an overview of the Bible because, again, you're going to be reading a lot during the day about 14 chapters, a half hour of reading every day for the next 90 days. But you will have read through the entire Bible. You will have more familiarity with the Bible than you've had ever before. I do encourage you to join with me. If you're interested, please send me a message, maybe comment on this video, or send me an email. And I'll send you the list that tells you and marks out the 90 days through the Bible for you. I hope that you'll consider challenging yourself as we move into this next season, this next month. Lord, help us to not conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Give us a new imagination so that we might live in ways that do not compute to the logic of materialism and militarism. Make us holy nonconformists so that we might see the kingdom of this world transformed into your glorious kingdom. The kingdoms of this world transformed into your glorious kingdom. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders that he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you for taking some time to join with me this morning in prayer. Go in peace. God bless.